Project's gonna be a really fun one. We're gonna be wood turning some Vikings, like this little chap. And the cool idea behind this project came from watching Vikings on the History Channel. So it's inspired me to make the Viking longship and all of the Vikings inside. We're gonna have a closer look at the materials that have gone into making this project. So I've got my army of Vikings in front of me, and we're gonna talk about the materials used to make these. So the body of the Vikings, these main bodies, were all taken from pallet wood slats or blocks. So for example, this was turned into this. We're going to be showing you how to do that in the next step. The heads of the Vikings were all turned from a curtain rail pole. So it's just an inch diameter dowel. I suppose you could buy these in that diameter or even turn a block of wood down to an inch. And they were all made exactly the same then for each of the weapons then of the Vikings were taken from just the slats of pallet wood and you can have a lot of fun making those. The weapon handles, it's like the axe handles, were taken from barbecue skewers and what I've done with these just to make them a bit more fun is I've put a little wedge in there so you can pull that out and interchange the weapon so swap them around if you wanted to if you want them secure you could just drill a tight hole and I had a few leftover bits of dowel from another project that I planed down to make the feet so I'm going to show you all those steps and we're going to be creating something hopefully that looks like this what I like about these Vikings is that they're all different so it's not like production turning where you're making the same thing over and over again each one of these has their own sort of character and they're more like caricatures than accurate sort of figures. But I, I like that. It gives it a bit of character to each one. And you can have lots of fun then customising these, making the different weapons and such. The next step, we're going to prepare our materials. We're going to need to make sure that we've got no nails left in there or any bits of metal. Because as it's spinning, if your tools touch that, it's not going to be good for your tools or yourself. We're going to be turning in the direction of the grain. So we're going to need to make sure the grain is on the side, end grain goes into the tailstock and headstock as it's spinning. What we're going to do is mark a cross on the end grain. Now if you want smaller body sizes, what you can do before we do this is cut these down into smaller squares. And that will give you something a bit more like these figures. But if you want more of a chubby Viking like this guy, you can start off with a thicker block. So we're going to do a cross corner to corner and that's going to give us our centre point that we can accurately line our tailstock and live centre into. So across there on our end grain, we're going to line these up on the lathe. So mounting this then, so we've got a cross, we're going to put our spear or drive centre into the centre of that cross, drive it in and we can put it into our headstock. Now to save a little bit of time in not changing over the chuck, there's a number of things you can do. Uh, number one is you can purchase one of these adapters so your chuck jaws grip over that and you can slide that in so it's, it's a perfect two morse taper in my latest case to hold that in place and you can use that or you can get smaller spurs and drive centers that your chuck jaws can clamp onto and that's what we're going to be using today that's to speeds up the time in between turning so you're spending less time removing the chuck and more time turning we're going to be turning this then so mount it between the centers and turn it into the round so it should look like this and we're going to be able then to turn our bodies from this shape now we're only going to be using three tools to do this we're going to be using a roughing gouge, and this is to remove the material to get it into a round. We're going to be using a parting tool, and this is going to be to create our tenants that we can hold onto as we're turning the body. So this part there. And we're also going to be using a traditional spindle gouge to turn the profile of the body. Optional, you could use a skew to do that as well. Mounted between centres then, so I'm going to find the point, line that with the point in the drive centre, do the same with the revolving centre, in this case a ring centre, in my tailstock, and 
tighten that down nicely put it in always give it a little tug pull towards you now setting your tool rest then your height your tool should ideally be cutting along the center line I would highly recommend wearing some personal protective equipment so minimum should be goggles and a dust mask but if you haven't come across these before these are power respirators highly recommend them they've got some filters on the side then and that filters out all the nasty dust especially if you're using tropical hardwoods the dust can be carcinogenic so you're going to look after your lungs you've only got two after all so we're going to turn the profile now with the roughing gouge We're going to use the parting tool to part down to make a tenant so the jaws can grab onto. A little bit out of truth, so we're going to trim up again with this. And I know this is a wood turning lathe, I still find you can cut metal on it, so you want to be very careful about your tools hitting the chuck. Turn this into the round and what we're going to need to do now is measure the diameter of the block. So just going to do that really quickly and in this case it is 60 across the centre. So we're going to measure back 60 and we're going to put a little line and we're going to draw that line all the way around. This is good because we've got a little bit of space where the chuck is holding onto the spigot and we're going to need that space so we can round the edge over later on. The next step then, we're going to measure the halfway point of 60 is 30. And the halfway points in between is 15, 15. And we're going to score those lines all the way around as well. That's going to help us then when we come to doing our curves. What I'm going to do is a 2mm line either side of the centre point. So we're not going to touch the centre as we're turning this until the very, very end of the turning. And we're going to be using our spindle gouge to make this into a ball. Now I suggest at the start of this process you bring up the tailstock. That's just to support the piece as you're turning it. Towards the end then we can remove this. To Wow, look at that. So what we're going to do is really accentuate this grain. You can see we've got a resin pocket there. We're going to use the blowtorch to bring out the summer and winter growth. You've probably seen this on some of my other videos. Uh, what will happen is the tree has two different types of growth. This sapia white portion is the summer growth because obviously photosynthesis, trees grow more in the summer. This darker growth, the winter growth, tends to be more compressed and hardy. And that's what will stay when we do the blowtorch. So before we blowtorch, just going to do some sanding with some 240 sandpaper, 240 grit. Want to come from underneath when you're sanding, so it will catch if you go from over the top. I find. Little tip for sanding. Put a bit of shavings in there. Tends to take out quite a bit of the heat. Okay, blow torching. Turn the speed down. Make sure you've got a fire extinguisher to hand just in case. Next step then, we're going to be using our wire brush to brush in the textures. Now I've only done this in light scorching. If you want these contrasts to be more, you can put in more of a heavier scorch and you're going to try and do this the wire brush in the direction of the grain. 
Next step then, we're going to put some fiddies wax on. This is a company in Cardiff that makes the Right, we've developed a few cracks in here, so they must have been in the wood before I started turning them. Uh, it's probably not the safest thing to turn if you've got cracks, big splits in your wood like that. Um, you can part it off with this nice and slowly, but just to make it a little bit safer, I'm going to be using a thin parting tool. I can show you a video how to make one of these, if you'd like. Okay, off we come. We've got the bottom, I've done like a little concave on the bottom, so it's going to sit easier on the legs. Right, marking out the Viking then, we're going to go down 15 millimetres, put a little line, and we're going to rotate the lathe round, and the bottom portion of the head is going to be 15 as well. So we're going to have to be quite careful as we get close to the jaws of the chuck. So to begin with, turn the lathe on, we're going to be at that 15mm line, feeding this in, going in about 3mm, that's going to be the face, and we're going to do the helmet next. So we're going to drill a 6mm hole into the body and we're going to drill a 6mm hole into the shield. So aiming not to go all the way through the shield, just about halfway. And that allow us then to cut a tiny bit of 6mm dowel, glue it into the hole and glue it onto the shield. So if you pop them into the body you can give a, a little mark then with a the pencil where this needs to be cut to. I'm going to do exactly the same with the head then. And I'm going to drill a hole in the bottom of the head, top of the body, so it can be attached onto. Next step, we're going to put a piece of dowel, so it's about 15 millimetres in diameter for the feet, into the vice. I'm just going to use one of my old fashioned cotton smoothers then to peel away the top to make a nice flat bottom. Good for the fire later. All right. And we're going to want to just divide these up into feet lengths, so roughly about 40 centimeters. You're going to do the same on both of these and what I tend to do is I've got a little whittling knife there just to give the end of the shoe a little bit of character just do some chipping out with the whittling knife and it does that sort of effect so a little bit rustic look into it we're going to tighten that back up in our vise cut down along this line And we're going to do another one of these the same size. So an easy way of making them the same size, if you hold the ends up against each other like that. A bit of line at the end. And what I tend to do is use the Whitler knife to do that rustic end of the foot look before you cut. So it gives you more to hold on to. Alright, so we're in again. <laughs> We've got our two feet, we're going to need to drill holes into our feet now so they can fit into. I've got my 8mm dowel and I've drilled a hole all the way through the feet. So we're just going to do that, whacked it into the vise, drill a hole all the way through. 
and we're going to decide how long our legs need to be. So we've got the, the figure, and we can just roughly do this by eye, look at the figure, right about there. And I'm going to cut both the legs to the same size. And again, each one of these doesn't have to be exactly the same, which is the beauty of this. So you can do different height Vikings, tall ones, short ones. And I'm going to need to do the same again. So thread that onto the towel. There we go. Line these up together. Little pencil mark. And sawing all the way through. So we've got our two feet. Next step, we're going to be drilling two holes into the bottom of our little Viking. Like so, and these feet then should slot tightly into those holes. And the reason we've drilled through the entire foot is that if we want to shorten these, we can just push the feet down and trim them off afterwards. So it makes it a little bit more adjustable for you. Shield on there. So it's starting to come together. The next step then is going to be doing the horns for the Viking helmets. The horns themselves, I've actually managed to laser cut because I have that facility, but you could really easily get a paper template and just cut them out on a scroll saw or even with a coping saw by hand. So what I'm going to do is I've got a little pin at the bottom of these that are three millimeters. So I've got my drill bit set up with a three millimeter drill bit and I'm just going to drill in two through three millimeter holes. One on the other side, so opposite to it. And let's give them a test fit. They're going to be quite tight, these are, which is what we want. There we go. So we've got our Viking head. Now, even though the horns are historically inaccurate, I think they look pretty cool on these toys. You're going to glue those into place when we come to doing all the gluing at the end. So the 8mm dowel, we're going to drill another hole for the arm. And we're going to be making the arm out of that 8mm dowel. Now, originally I turned the arms, but I've thought of a quicker and easier way to do this. So I'm going to show you that in a second. Quicker way would be if you've got yourself a belt sander, put this into an electric drill, tighten it up, and we can form it on the sander. So it's gonna be very dusty. You're gonna need some dust extraction and some safety goggles. But we'll see if this technique works. Wait, that's actually worked pretty well. <laughs> I'm quite happy with that. So we're gonna drill some holes now for the weapons, then we'll be done. The arm fits in quite nicely then. And that is a heck of a lot easier than the, the turn ones I did on the uh, original. So I wish I thought of that earlier on. So we're going to drill a hole three millimetres into there. And I think we'll give this guy a spear. Cool. So I've got a barbecue skewer then. Cut the ends off. And that's going to be my spear. We're going to fit that then into the arm from there, I think. Snap him off starting to come together. So I'm going to do a cone shape using the same technique I use for the arms on the belt sander, drill a hole in the top and we'll glue that on. It's my favourite bit of any project now with the assembly, so we're going to be gluing all our parts together. So blob of glue in the head hole, blob of glue in the arm hole and the feet holes. Now doing this all together just makes it a quicker process and if you're batching these out you're going to quickly see that it's the best way to do it. Right, get my legs in. So 
So here's the completed piece. <laughs> it's a lot of fun making this little guy and I hope this project's inspired you to want to go off and make your own Vikings. If you do, I'd love it if you could share those videos or photos with me. It'd be awesome to see. Now if you've enjoyed tonight's project, please consider subscribing and I'll be able to get some more projects your way then. If you've got any projects you'd like to see in the upcoming future, please write a comment in the comments below and I'll try my best to see what I can do. Hope you have a great night. Thanks for watching. Dolchenfrau, Norstar.